Hello everyone and welcome to how to import a fuel tank from Blender in a Kerbal Space program. We're starting off with a fuel tank because it's the easiest part to deal with. So it'll be the most straightforward and then later on I'll introduce other parts when I make them. But for now let's just go with a fuel tank to make things clear. Uh, I'm not totally sold on this particular fuel tank model but we'll see how it looks in Kerbal Space program and then decide. I might have to change it and make a different fuel tank for my purposes. But anyway, I had previously done a video on how to import parts from Blender into Kerbal Space Program, and you might want to check that out just in case that's clearer than this one, who knows. But uh, since people keep asking me to make one, I guess that might not have been the best thing. So we're going to go with this. Now, the first thing that you need to do that you don't need to do for a regular 3D model, but you need to do for a physics-based 3D model, something that's going to be in a program with a physics engine, is to create a collider. Now, in this case, because we've got a roughly spherical shape, we could technically just use this tank as a collider, because it's just a sphere. But the more vertices, the more faces that a collider has, the more lag it might generate. You want to make your colliders as simple as possible. So one thing we can do is make an even simpler sphere, as our collider. Fortunately, um, the whole thing is centered on the on 000, the origin anyway. So it's not a big deal. I want radius 2.5, but this time I want to reduce how many segments and rings uh, to like that. And that'll be a very simple sort of collider for this. And again, the collider is what collides with things. It, it bounces off the ground or hits the ground. Also, it is what you surface attach things to in Kerbal Space Program. So if you want to put a RCS thruster, this is where it will attach to. And that's why sometimes when you try to attach an RCS thruster uh, on a part, sometimes it goes from being oriented one way to oriented a completely different way, you know, um, you know, 30 degree gap or whatever. And that's because of the collider. So uh, we've got this sphere. I'm going to rename it. And that's by double clicking now. Uh, collider. And I'm actually going to parent it to the tank. So control P, uh, object was fine. And now the collider is paired with the tank and will go where the tank goes. Now I'll make everything appear. Uh, we will make the collider invisible in Unity, which is what we need to import things to. But we'll keep it visible for now. And yeah, uh, that's all. We've got the cube imports. I'm going to apply the mirroring. OK. now. There's no collider on those cubes, it's just that sphere that we have. But we'll have the um, attachment nodes on those points so that the docking ports can be attached to them. Um, we don't need to make a separate collider for that in this case. You can have as many colliders as you want on a part, and sometimes you will need to. The colliders have to be convex. They can't have holes, they can't have dimples, they can't have anything that is concave at all. So, well, at least for the purposes of Kerbal Space Program. So yeah you may need lots of colliders to do a thing for instance if you have a torus because the torus has a hole in it if you actually want something to be able to pass through that torus you're going to need to basically have a lot of cylinders around you know arrayed around maybe 12 different cylinders to make up the torus as colliders so that you can have an empty uh, hole in the middle if you don't need a hole in the middle then you don't need to do that you could just make it uh, something simpler. Um, yep, so we'll go into that when we have more complex shapes than this, but this is good enough for now. Now, if you are, if you have something with animation, you have to export it in a different way than what I'm going to do here. So for this kind of part, without an animation, export as Collada, DAE files. For the animation parts, anything with an animation, .fbx is what you want. But this time we're doing DAE. And it's just going to be xenontank.dae. I can dump it anywhere. Um, if you've got parts in your hierarchy that you don't want to uh, export, then you need to do selection only. But in this case, it deleted the camera and the lights for a reason. And right now, the only things that are in my hierarchy are things that I want to uh, export. And uh, main will be fine, I think. Um, you could just select geometry. Uh, and apply modifiers. Um, yeah, anyway, and then there's options. There's actually an 
animations option. I don't know how well that would work. I've only used FBX for that. So anyway, uh, xenontank.dae, export. And our texture file was already separate, right? Uh, we had imported the texture file. This exporting the DAE does not export the texture file. The texture file is a separate file that you created in Photoshop or whatever and brought into here. And then you have to bring it again into Unity. Now, I've seen people open up Blender files in Unity. I don't know if I want to do it that way. Uh, I'm just going to do it this way. Uh, it's probably less prone to issues. We'll see. Anyway, uh, going into Unity, let me change which window is being captured. Okay, so this is a Unity project. You need to create a new project and you'll have some scene. I'm going to rename the scene. Uh, so save scene as. I basically create a new scene for each part uh, so that I can easily grab it and edit it later if there's something wrong with it. So a Xenon tank scene. And one thing you need to do if you haven't set up your Unity before, this is Unity 5.4.0. I think F3 or whatever. I have not updated it to the latest. You don't need to. Uh, so this is the one I use. Now, you need to import package and you need to import KSP part tools. You can have to find that on the web. I don't have a link for it uh, available right now. Uh, but KSP part tools, you'll need to import custom package and find your KSP part tools, whatever it is. Um, I've already imported it. That's why we have a part tools and squad core thing here. Okay. So yeah, once you have that, you'll have uh, under tools, KSP part tools here. You don't need to worry about that. What you want to do is add a new empty and it's called game object and add component. And we have a KSP thing here. If you don't have a KSP thing in here, you did not import part tools correctly. So KSP thing, part tools, and that's it. Now I use PNG files for my textures. And I'm going to just call this Xenon Tank for now. And set your directory to where you want it to go. EDB Mods Parts. And I'm going to create a new folder for everything called Xenon Tank. Okay. So now I have that all set up. And then when I want to create the part, I'll click right. Now I'm going to drag and drop the parts into this. Uh, and I had saved it in the, I have my own little blender folder for all the blender things I'm working on. So I'm going to grab the model from that. So again, it's uh, xenontank.dae. I'm just going to drag and drop it in here. And hopefully I didn't forget anything. So there's the xenon tank looking weird because the collider is still visible. Seems to be offset. Well, we'll, we'll work on that. And then also I need the texture files. So xenontank.png. Oh, the reason it's weird is because it's not using this texture file. We'll go over that. And also I have a bump map, which is literally just the PNG in grayscale. <laughs> All the, it's desaturated. So uh, here we've got the model. Now, if you're importing something with animation with FBX, you need to actually rescale it to by a hundred, but we aren't, we don't need to worry about this. This is fine. Um, right now we can just drag and drop and there it is. Now it's using the wrong texture. It is using the texture of the last part I did. So what we need to do is change that. And we do that by going to any of these. There should be only one material and I'm selecting instead the Xenon tank texture. Uh, oh, right. But we have to do that for each of these. That's not right. Ooh, I should have made sure that there wasn't a different material here. Let's just, so for the collider, yeah, I should just have told it to be the regular material. It created an extra material that might cause problems. Let me remove component. Remember, you can only have one material per part. So we're going to remove the mesh renderer because we don't really want to render the collider at all. What we need to do with the collider, and you can select that any as many parts as you want to add a collider to, you can. So if you've got like a dozen colliders, just so you can do this at once. Physics, mesh collider, convex. And that will tell it that this is the collider that we want. None of the other parts is going to have a collider thing on it. They will have the mesh renderer, which means they're visible. 
So let me just take a look at the game object, show materials. It only has one material here, it says, so hopefully it's all right. Otherwise, it might have accidental transparencies or some other business. I'm going to add the bump map here. So we're going to go with Xenon Tank Bump. And it's not marked as a normal map, so I'm going to click Fix Now. And now it's marked as a normal map. Okay, and that's that's it uh, for a simple fuel tank. So we've got the structure, we've got the cubes, and we've got that and we've got it named and right now we can just write it um, there's nothing else we can do here after this we have to write the configuration file for it I'm gonna save it save the scene and then we're going to write it to the folder and then we should have in the folder the file the model file and then also the two texture files the regular texture file on the bump map. In the folder with the model file, which is the .mu file, and the two PNG files, you need to create a configuration file. Name it the same thing as the model file and everything else. So xenontank.cfg. And should open up the .cfg file and any text text uh, program that you have I've got notepad++ so let me capture that okay so it is an empty file like this right now and best thing to do oops I suddenly got all sorts of other windows um, is go into the squad folder and find a xenon tank <laughs> so, uh, as, a, as a sample because you need an example of one we gotta configure it for stock first and then later configure it for realism overhaul. So I'm going into fuel tanks, xenon tank large. I think this is a large one. It's five meters. Okay, so this is the configuration for xenon tank large. I'm gonna copy, gonna paste. Um, I use, for all your parts, I've come up with some prefix so that you know it's yours. Xenon tank. Okay, part. I am not Rover Dude. Apparently, Rover Dude made the Xenon tank large, so I'm going to change my name. I don't do it this mesh way. That is an older way of doing it. A uh, new way is to have model. And this way, you can specify the file path. And let me see if I have an example of this that I can copy and paste. See this model? And then you just specify the model. And the file path assumes that it's in the game data folder and then I have it as edb mods slash hopefully that's the right slash right yeah um, slash xenon tank oh wait parts I've made a mistake on that before xenon tank and xenon tank and that'll find the model should be okay now node stack top and node stack bottom. Well, we do have those. And let's go back to Blender and see where those are exactly. We sort of have the cube thing selected here. I'll uh, move the 3D cursor to it. And you can see uh, the 3D cursor sort of sits at the top there, it's sort of rotated for some reason. But um, the Z axis is 2.538. And otherwise, the X and Y is at 0, 0. And if we uh, click down here, it automatically tries to sit on the mesh. And we see negative 2.516. It seems to me it's a little bit tucked in there. Let's see. It should be the same. I'm going to say 2.536 would be a good place for the node. Now, in Kerbal Space Program or Unity, the z-axis in Blender is actually the y-axis. Uh, so you'll have to remember that. So the z-axis, uh, the up and down axis, is the y-axis in Kerbal Space Program. So when we go back to configuring our Xenon tank in Notepad++, um, we want to 2.536 I think I wanted it node stack top uh, this is x coordinate y coordinate z coordinate and the up and down is this y coordinate 
So we'll have it to positive and negative. Um, important that the positive, uh, so x coordinate, y coordinate, z coordinate, um, the way it is facing in the x direction, the way it is facing in the y direction, and the way it's facing in the z direction. So it, it, uh, the um, attachment nodes in Kerbal Space Program only point in one direction. Then they're a very definite vector off of the surface of the model. So here it's saying it's pointing up. And that's what we want for the top node. And then this one is pointing down. Now, if you need a node that's pointing off to the side, you're going to have to fill around with the X and Z and figure out which one is which on your model. Um, tech required ion propulsion makes sense. I'm not going to fit around with the costs right now. I'm going to just call it this the Mars mission leak. Mars mission xenon tank. Uh, I'm typing all off. And my standard manufacturer name is Shearstrut Industries. And uh, I'm not very complicated about description. Xenon tank for Mars missions. <laughs> Attach rules. I like to just allow all sorts of attachment. I forget the order of it because I almost never do that. Um, mass. We'll leave it as is because I'm going to contain the same amount of xenon gas for stock. Now, because it's a stock tank, um, we have to think, well, it is a 5 meter tank. Maybe I should size it to uh, 3.75 meters because that's a standard size. So 5, so 3.75 divided by 5 is uh, 0.75. I'll scale to 0.75. Um, and then uh, if you may need to have scale here. So I'm just going to do X, Y, and Z here, just for safety's sake. Rescale factor, generally don't touch. Some people use that one. Uh, there are subtle reasons why one is used sometimes and other times another is. So it is, I'll use the same auto location for the tags. I'll add Xenon to it, even though probably that'll be caught by the title. When you search for stuff, search for a part in Kerbal Space Program, it'll search the titles of the parts and also the tags. So, yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to leave it as it is here right now. And we should check how it looks in stock. Okay, well, it's here. Mars Mission Xenon Tank. I mean... It's sort of shiny. I don't feel like the bump map has done anything good to be honest. It's got Xenon. Still not sold on the look of it. We'll see. Let's configure it for realism overhaul now that we see that it's basically working in stock. I guess we could totally verify it by adding a controller and... Oh, I don't have MechJib in here anyway. Nope. Well, well, it should show the Delta V down there, not that they have a stock Delta V indicator. So where's our ion engine? 547? Uh, I guess that's it in, uh, on the ground. Yeah, it's uh, 22,987 in vacuum. Right, well, it's just a tank. Okay, so realism overhaul. So I've created a new configuration file called ro-xenontank.config and we are going to address the part. Of course, this requires module manager installed, but if you're using realism overhaul, you should have that at part and then square brackets, the name of the part, this one. And then you could say specifically for realism overhaul here for re uh, realism overhaul, which would mean the plugin for realism overhaul, or you could say needs. That's another thing. Or, yeah, it depends on the situation. I'm just going to do four for now because um, I'm only going to use it in a realism overall install. It's possible that uh, if you do four instead of needs, it, uh, it'll try and apply what's going on in this configuration, even in stock. So um, I'm going to get rid of the existing model because I want to rescale it. So you do that like this, get rid of the model include the curly brackets 
and then I'm gonna make sure to replace it with a new model with the right scale. So I'm gonna change the scale. When you change something, you do at exclamation mark deletes, and then I want the scale to be one now. 1.0. Up, 1.0. What else do we need to change? Well, the mass is probably up for grabs here. I'll do some basic math. Let's say that uh, we want the, the surface area of it. 4 pi. The radius is 2.5. Surface area is 78.5 meters squared. And then maybe it's about, uh, let's say, 5 millimeters thick. And it's aluminum. It's, it's a good start. That gives us a tankage mass of 1.1 tons. OK. And, but instead of doing this, oops, I didn't want to change it in this one. I want to change it in this one at mass equals and we'll compare it to the the procedural tanks and just reset it based on the procedural tanks now we're going to get rid of the resource because we want it to be a modular tank the way that most real fuels tanks are so resource we want to get rid of this resource so we specify it in the square brackets and we also add empty curly brackets Okay, so I'm gonna copy over um, the tank configuration from something else because that'll be easier than writing it out. And you can look in your realism overhaul folder for an example of a module. Well, if I happen, oh, there's a tank, a module fuel tanks. So you want this module, module fuel tanks. Now, what's the volume of a sphere? It's actually 4.9 meters. I've cheated on the, uh, you know, I didn't actually add the platforms on the sides or the structural bits, but I just made it simple. But I want to find out what the volume is. It's about 4.95, I think, the sphere was in diameter. So uh, 4 thirds pi. Hold on. And then times... R, which will be uh, 2.475 squared. Oh, sorry, cubed. OK, I get 63.5 meters cubed, which is the same as 63,500 here. And uh, I think. We'll keep it to service module. I don't know what other tank we can have. So I'm going to put a xenon tank in here. And, oh, not xenon tank. Xenon gas tank in here. And we'll fill it up to the brim. The base mass is negative 1 because we're just going to use the mass here. Otherwise, this would add another mass to it. OK, so let's see. We'll have to bring this into the game to see how it compares with the other tanks. I want to sort of make it shiny. Um, this is, uh, uh, you know, just a matter of looks. So I want to add a Textures Unlimited configuration. Got to open up an example. This is from my Tugs part. And you can see uh, Reflection Config needs Textures Unlimited. This enables it. And then it adjusts the KSB model shader. So what I'm going to do is, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to add this to the RO configuration instead of create a new file. So since it requires Textures Unlimited anyway. So this is fine. We need to change the name to this part the model and the rest is how much shininess and of what kind we want now 
this is, uh, I think we need decimals here these days. So important to add that. I don't want it that shiny. It's some shiny and it's definitely not smooth with all those wrinkly bits. So low smoothness. Mesh, uh, I'm not gonna, well, you could specify which mesh you want it to be applied to. And the mesh is the cube structure or tank on our part. I want to I want to apply it to the tank, really. The structure I don't care so much about as far as shininess. So, just the tank. We'll see how shiny that is. All right. So let me bring it into. You don't have to do this part. This is just textures unlimited. If you want shininess, um, the main thing is this for a fuel tank. And I think you pretty much have to do everything there. So if you've got liquid fuel and oxidizer, you'll have to delete those as well, or mop repellent or whatever. And then add your module fuel tanks so it works with real fuels the way we want it to. All right, let's bring it into a realism overhaul install and see if it works. Well, I did forget one thing, and that's that uh, we need to tag this as an RO part. So going briefly back to our notepad uh, we need a little tag that says that this is an RO part and that's just um, percent sign RSS RO config equals true so I'm gonna copy that and again you should look at the RO configurations that come with realism overhaul uh, to see an example of these parts just open up the squad parts that are configured by realism overhaul to see an example and that will solve that problem. It doesn't matter, we're gonna to have to reload this to fix uh, the mass anyway. So let me just save that. So we are going to have to make some adjustments anyway. Um, well, I didn't really check out the nodes last time. They seem to be in the right place. They're a little bit small, but that's all right. Uh, in the configuration, hopping back to it again, uh, you'll see that this last number the zero is the size of the node. Let's change that to one. So that'll make it larger. Again, X, Y, Z, the orientation of the attachment vector, X, Y, Z, and then the size of it. Okay, back to this. I want to compare it to, well, uh, why don't I stick a docking port there just to make sure it works with my little docking ports. Um, Balance only docking port. Uh, not quite the greatest size match. I think I should lower it too. Yeah. Yeah, it can be lowered a little bit. In fact, all the way down here would be nice. I That uh, whole beveling thing is just unnecessary. Uh, and on the bottom as well. Okay, uh, uh, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to remove the last digit. Oh, yeah, for now. I'll tweak that a little bit. Anyway, that's not the most important thing. What we want to do is compare it to a procedural tank of the same size. So, it's uh, fillet cylinder 5 meters. Actually, we can go uh, 4.95 or whatever but we need it to be a sphere and yeah I'll, I'll just to account for that structure we're gonna go 4.95 and it's supposed to be a service module tank and we're going to fill it up with xenon gas oh yeah so that's the first thing that we need to fix uh, the gas gases don't work the same way that the regular stuff does. It's a multiplier of I think a hundred. If we up the utilization we see that it's a hundred times what I have here. So this is this is way underutilized. Um, it's a hundred times what we have here. Then the dry mass is 3.81 tons. So but maybe we should have a little bit less utilization. Maybe uh, it is just a sphere but there's a little bit of interior skin to it. Most of the structure is on the outside right now. 
So I'm going to change this one to those numbers, 3.685, and then also uh, that much xenon gas. And then it's done. So that's basically a fuel tank. So I'll do those changes off to the side. And yep, well, hopefully this was clear. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. It's not quite as good as this gold foil, to be honest. Maybe I should just use the procedural tanks. But anyway, we'll leave that off to the side for now. And uh, next time, I'll see what other part I need to make, and then I'll make it, and then I'll show you how I make it and import it in, and we'll go from there. Assuming it's not just another fuel tank, of course. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.